have any uh, uh, frozen chili, chili, on, chili on my face? No? Oh, you're just a good girl. It's okay. She can see with me. Kelly knows when the camera's rolling. She, she gets either camera shy or she wants to be in the frame. She's a star. <laughs> so we're sitting on a back lake in central Ontario, Canada. And uh, it's a beautiful spot. We're all alone out here. Nobody's been out here all season, all, all winter by the looks of it. It's not a well-known spot, but it's uh, actually fairly close to the cabin and also to where Jim lives. So it's an ideal location for us to finally get together. So if you don't recognize these two guys, this is uh, Jim Baird and Ted Baird. And you may recognize them if you've been watching Histories alone over the last few years. They actually won the season, when was it, last year? Uh, season four, so this one before the last one. Okay, so season yeah. four, so uh, yeah. that would have been last winter or two winters ago? Yeah, I think uh, well, two 20, years ago, 2016 or 2017, 2017 we won. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that happens to be the only season I've actually watched in full, and it was amazing to see a couple of Canadian guys uh, win, the, not only participate, but win. But what was so ironic is that uh, uh, Jim and I started talking about two and a half years ago before he, they went on alone and we were organ, trying to organize a moose hunting trip together and all of a sudden Jim went silent and uh, found out afterwards why. Well, he, they were off at, uh, in Vancouver here in uh, British Columbia filming that, that uh, season of Alone. And I wasn't allowed to say anything about it. I was under, under wraps to not talk about the production or anything. Um, so I kind of just had to drop off the radar completely for uh, 85 days we were out there. Wow. Um, more than that, I think it was almost 90 and we actually 75 of those days were spent surviving. You know, we had 10 items. We had to uh, just basic items that we were allowed to bring and, and everything else. We had to basically get off the land to eat our lunches and dinners every day. So yeah. it was pretty tough. I lost a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's pretty awesome. If yeah. you haven't seen that show, you got to Look back uh, through, where can people find the show actually? Uh, you know, you can go into historychannel.com um, and also I think it's on Daily Motion too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so you can check it out there as well. Some people have, uh, I don't know if it's legit, but some people have basically just put up the whole thing on YouTube and yeah, you can, Yeah. it's like, I guess, it, you know, so. If you, you get on Google and you search, you, you'll find it somewhere for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's worth checking out. I'm not, um, I don't watch a lot of TV, which is why I haven't seen most of the seasons. In fact, I had to borrow somebody else's login just to log into history through another channel to, to watch it. Um, it's That's what I did. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting because it's probably one of the more legitimate survival things out out there in reality uh, TV land, and uh, it, it's hardcore. Like you've seen me, of course, over the years doing a lot of stuff outdoors, but it's different to go into a different climate than you're used to, and I think that was probably one of the bigger challenges for, for these guys is the the climate. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a really damp, damp climate. Uh, things were very different. The, all the trees around us were gigantic, so we had very limited amount of small size trees that we could do things like build shelters with it literally rained all the time and this is on northern vancouver island so we dealt with a damp cold which is you know minus 10 minus 15 but almost felt like no matter how much clothes you would wear that cold would still get into your bones uh and we were out there through the late fall and and uh winter we didn't get out till after new year so it was yeah, the coldest was, winter yeah. in 30 years yeah really? yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Well, yeah, so, so that's challenge. That's that's extremely challenging. So to do that, um, I mean, you guys have both been doing. How old are you guys? First of all, so I just turned 38, 35. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. and you grew up in um, so southern Ontario. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, basically Toronto, right? Yeah, we mm -hmm. we lived went to school in Toronto, and uh, the way we got into this stuff, I guess, through our you know our dad and and spending a ton of time just in a large public land or crown land area so no road access and so everything we learned was how we learned of boats and, and carrying canoes getting into the backcountry lakes canoeing into portaging those lakes to get on the the good fish and just exploring kind of everywhere and that's sort of where i guess we got this this uh, skill and confidence and then mm -hmm then we're sort of wanted to take it to the next step and we started kind of branching out as we got a little older, branching out and doing canoe trips and trying to get into different uh, uh, wilderness areas. And then of course, going further north and heading up to the territories and, and uh, doing trips and stuff like that up there. So 
uh, it's probably a little difficult if you live in somewhere other than Canada or, or the United States to appreciate, first of all, how much wilderness we have, but also the fact that most uh, people, not most, I don't know what the percentage would be, but a lot of people do this kind of stuff every weekend. This is just a normal yeah. Canadian thing to yeah, do, right? Yeah, it is. So yeah. we see like people doing bushcraft yeah. in the UK or somewhere else. We don't quite wrap our heads around yeah. that because we're thinking well we just kind of went out that and did that at six years old in their backyards kind of thing because their backyards often backed on to, yeah. to what a lot of people would call um, not quite wilderness but at least big forest yeah um, and then we go up uh, typically we live closer to urban centers where our parents worked and where we now work or most people now work and then you go up to which not far away, but go up north to the places that have these wilderness areas that we're able to do all these things, hunting, fishing, yeah. canoeing. Yeah, we had, a, we had a friend up from the States, actually he was my uh, cousin's husband, and I brought him out bass fishing, and I was we were fishing with uh, uh, floating jig heads with leeches, so it was like really exciting, it was getting a lot of action, and he caught two nice fish, and he was like, it was, he was so excited about it, <laughs> and he's like, how often do you do this? I'm like, every week like every, you just couldn't believe that i do this that this is yeah, what yeah. we did every week i'm like it's not just me man a lot of people that's what everyone does you know now that's being said these guys yeah. take it up to another level that's yeah. why i kind of wanted to know when they started and and i just set the stage of what it's typical for a canadian now typical canadian does the weekend warrior type thing where we go out and do that on the on the weekends or any of our vacations or whatever spare time we have but um these guys have kind of taken that up another notch and gone much more remote, much harder trips and longer trips than the typical person. So when did you guys start that kind of thing, those kind of trips? How, how old would you have been? Oh, when we paddled in the Hani, Ted. Would that, would that be your first trip? I think our, that was our first, our first like wilderness, like, like, real... like dropped off by a float plane in the, in the Northwest Territories. That was our first Yeah, like plane. we'd done other, you know, uh, other trips, but like the most, the first, trip that was the most remote i'd say was the nahani mm -hmm. and I, don't know, I, was, I was probably like 20 or something yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's early and we just did it a self-guided thing we just did that we planned it out we i think that was the you know ted's had to run some pretty big rapids on that river and he's like i don't know jim i haven't done a lot of whitewater paddle i'm like ah you'll be fine it's just like hitting boat wakes on the lake because we paddle mostly on lakes yeah, and yeah. he was he just he yeah. ended up running like a, a five kilometer canyon of class two and three wow no boulders that's the first rapid he ever ran wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh don't do that at home no in fact yeah. i still haven't done that and i yeah. do a lot of stuff in the yeah. outdoors yeah. i'm not uh, I don't canoe at the level these guys canoe at for sure. Well, yeah, it's still a, yeah, well, it's a mindset, I guess. I always say this too, a lot of guys go out and do their thing and um, it doesn't matter, I guess, where you do it, whether you do it, you know, where we are or in the UK or in the States, wherever it is, it's just a different place in a lot of t uh, cases, right? So you're just in a completely different remote area, so you need to be more careful, but you're still doing the same still need the same skills you still yeah. need to start a fire you still need mm -hmm. to catch a fish it's just is it's just that your wind your margin for error exactly. error if anything happens you're in a lot more trouble right. you know what i mean yeah yeah um but other than that it's pretty in a lot of ways it's easier because there's way more fish most of the time yeah, in a yeah. lot of the areas there's you know survival is kind of easy because there's more resources because nobody no humans have been around exploiting them right right yeah, yeah. as long as it's summer yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, for sure. You need to stockpile if you're trying to live that. And yeah. we're, by the way, if you see us jerking our hands here, we're yeah. actually fishing. Yeah. Uh, we got this amazing campsite set up over here. And if you want to watch that video, then tune into my Self Reliance channel. Or um, you guys are going to upload videos. Yeah, that's right. We're going to put uh, a, a video on our channel, Jim Baird Adventure, just a me and, tre uh, me and Ted's trek in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, meeting up with Sean and setting up our tent and you know getting everything set up here in the bush. So yeah, check that out. Yeah, so we have a um, they set up a winter or a hot tent over here. So the fire going outside the tent and then inside the tent we'll have a wood stove going at night. Mm -hmm. I'm used to camping outside uh, during the winter. He's, he's a little tougher than us, I think, <laughs> I when it comes think to so. this winter stuff, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's just what I'm used to. I've been yeah. doing it since I was probably 12 years old, sleeping just out, outside or in little primitive shelters. Yeah. But uh, this is Callie's very first overnight winter trip. Oh, how exciting. Um, yes, and she's exhausted. She's actually falling asleep against Ted there, I noticed. 
She does, she not used to people. She hasn't been well socialized because she's basically a bush dog, dog living at the cabin most of the time. And she's not used to other dogs. So she's kind of harassing Buck a little bit. But she, like I said, she's exhausted. She's ready to go to, to, go to bed now. Anyway, that's what we're doing. We're fishing outside the uh, spot in the little narrows here, hoping to catch some pickerel, some walleye. Looks like it should be a pretty good spot, but we haven't yeah. gotten into anything yet. Nope. It's the problem is that we, the ice is almost three feet thick here and we're, we only have a hand auger. So to jump up and move and try different spots when you have to drill through three feet of ice is a little more challenging. Yeah, we spent a lot of time getting firewood prepped. We, uh, we've yeah. had a lot of rain lately and then it froze again. Yeah. Wood is actually saturated. It looked like it was dry and it's actually saturated. So. Kind of weird, actually. Mm -hmm. I've never really run into it quite like that where we kind of had a freak rainstorm. At this time of year, you don't really get rain. No. And it soaked into the tree and then froze. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been a real weird winter, but actually what it's created is perfect uh, ice and snow conditions for traveling, which I'm really surprised that it's been very, very tough to travel in four feet of snow this year with a lot of slush on the ice. Mm -hmm. So we've lucked out that way. Yeah. Well, one thing it did is that maybe, you know, not that this is a, a easy area to access by any means, but I mean, we definitely have it all to ourselves and no one else can get it, is willing to come in here, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's Sometimes you do Sometimes, a little Sometimes, more extra work, you get the, it's that's a reward, That's right, you right? get a reward, you get the place to yourself and you know, that's, the harder it is to get there, usually the more fish there is, although we haven't caught one yet, but... Uh, <laughs> Let's not say that until we catch them. <laughs> but, it's uh, such a beautiful spot it here. Is. It is absolutely yeah. gorgeous, you know? Just the fish would to. be an extra perk. Yeah, absolutely. And if we put our time in here, we would. We Just to give you a little background on the lake, this is a lake that's about two uh, small lakes and a pond off of the main lake that I had my cabin on for years back in the 90s mainly and uh, I've only hunted back here I've actually never fished this lake and I've always wanted to camp here I've always wanted to fish these lakes so this is my first opportunity we're not getting going to get enough opportunity really to explore it so I'm definitely going to come back here but it is beautiful like Ted said we have it to ourselves and this is fairly typical you get a couple of portages off the main lakes and you get these places all to yourself. Beautiful campsite, like all surrounded by mature, mostly conifers. There's hemlock and pines and spruce and fir and just an awesome, awesome location. I, it's, yeah, it's hard to believe that we have this to ourselves. Actually. It doesn't get much better than that. Is isn't this it's yeah. it's something we take for granted, I guess, yeah. as you were touching on earlier, just what we have here in Canada. It's it's just so unique and so special and it's something that you know a lot of people are just doing it's a typical thing but it's incredible how wild everything is and how much wilderness we have and uh you know uh, we were talking earlier that some people get really worked up about oh you better not like you know snap a live branch off a tree and stuff which is which is you always obviously want to be very mindful of, oh. of things but, uh, and, and not destroy, and you want to leave as little lace, little or to no trace. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we, if, if an area that sometimes these areas we're going into, no one's been to, like literally, uh -huh. or camped on for a hundred years, and sometimes you go a little further ever. Mm -hmm. And so right. you don't have that kind of pressure, and... Uh, You're not making the same kind of impact. Right, so, you know, it's... Uh, and, and it's kind of how it once was in, in other places. And yeah. so I feel really fortunate to, to have that. It's true. So back to, so, so the, the alone thing, we don't, I don't like the, so alone is um, something these guys did, but it's just one little part of what they've done. Um, I think what's most interesting about I think both of their stories but I think right now in particular Jim is that he's made a life of this mm -hmm. and that is something that almost everybody aspires to is how do you earn a living and have a life that's centered around your passion the things that that you're most excited or ha what what drive you yeah and and that's 
it just passion is definitely what it is and I just got to a point where I had that confidence like I said growing up and then from a young age I kind of did these larger than life trips and somebody would say well, well that's a trip of the lifetime and I'd say well like I'm going to be having many trips in my lifetime then because I'm planning on doing one next year and the year before and the year after that and it got to a point well how do you afford this how do you have a job that will get you to have that uh you know that free time to go off for a month and canoe a wild river in the northwest territories right and basically i found that that's all i was thinking about all the time and i just couldn't do anything else and so eventually um with uh about minus thirty thousand dollars in debt uh, I, dis I, I got a job as a prospector, mineral prospector um, in northern Quebec and northern Ontario and worked stints on and off, made some good money, invested that into, uh, you know, making web videos and doing some more trips and eventually that dried up and I, I went into doing this full time just uh, through more or less content creation and, and that kind of stuff, you know, making videos of what I'm doing and finding a way what however it might be to kind of make ends meet and man like it was not easy so i'm like <laughs> I, like i'd be i remember one time i was in, in northern quebec at like the just finished a two-week trip i had just enough money to get my vehicle back to my house which is like a 30-hour drive and just hope that there'd be a check in the mailbox through for a sponsor or something so that i could you know somehow managed to pay my all my pills and like it would be a miracle it would be there you know i'd be like wow right so it was really close a lot of times and then uh, eventually it kind of just built and i went on the loan thing and i've been managing to do that a, a full time just doing big trips and stuff like that for about five years now five you know years, yeah and that's amazing that, well i think yeah. what's um probably very noteworthy about that is that lots of people see even what I'm doing and what these guys are doing and think I want to do that um, I don't want to say necessarily jealous but definitely envious that um, a log? I don't know it's coming it sure up though, as hell right? feels like a log you got a big one on here if that's a fish I'm going to be Pretty excited. Doesn't even think how he's caught. He's that big. Yeah. Sure as hell doesn't seem like it's swimming around much. Eh? Funny that it just out of nothing. It's got to be a log or something. Maybe it's a pike. I don't think so. Is anything even coming up? Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Oh. Oh. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't a boot. <laughs> I was just really hoping that it was. Like, I knew it wasn't a fish because it was. I didn't yeah, feel it wasn't it. moving at all. But to be honest with you, that's like almost better than nothing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of excitement. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure. Um, with a little beet fish crisp, it might not be so bad, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's actually getting a little bit chilly here. We put this wind block up, the wind stopped, but then the sun went down, of course. Yeah. So, and it's starting to get late. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, so basically, I guess my point is that it's one thing to want something or to be, or to want to do, to make your hobby a career, but the reality of it is that it's not, you don't do that casually. You can't do a little bit of video making or a little bit of, um, you know, brand you know, ambassadorship or or just go to the odd trade show or something on behalf of a brand who pays you to do that and make a career of it it to to make a, or an actual career to make a living at your hobby you have to be so passionate about it that you're willing to put it all on the line you're willing to live poorly if that's what it takes yeah. or to it can't be uh it, it, you have to enjoy it you have to enjoy yeah. the, the build and the excitement of getting to the next step and getting to do the next trip and making things work because if you can't if you don't really like it it's just going to feel like work and you're never going to be able to get it done you know what i mean that's at least how it is for me anyways i totally you know? I totally agree yeah. with that mm -hmm. yeah like because you know i'll be working at planning all these trips and how am i going to shoot it and who might be interested in, in coming in as a sponsor to uh, and who am i going to sell the, the the article to and all this kind of stuff and that's kind of exciting to me i love looking at maps mm. and planning yeah, potential yeah. trips and 
finding a way to make it all work but if i didn't enjoy both sides of it like you know yeah. i kind of found i found that i really do enjoy making content and uh, film uh, you know filmmaking and and writing and all that but you know that came after as a way that hey here i can go out there and i can go off into the bush for a month and i can come back home and get paid for it how can i keep something. doing all this and, right? and also like, create something cool it, yeah. that i can look at and be like i, I built that you know yeah, it's not yeah. quite a yeah. amazing log cabin but you know what i mean it's, <laughs> It's still something that, but you that can I still share like. it with everyone too, yeah. right? Which is pretty awesome. Like some yeah. of the times, like you know, I'm not as heavily uh, um, involved in monetizing this as as Jim has. I mean, I have, uh, which is which is great. But um, you know, a lot of the times you're out here and you're like, oh man, that would be so cool. Like I wish I could. I wish so and so was here to see that. I wish you know and and this is kind of a way of bringing everyone mm -hmm. along especially people that maybe you know would like to be able to go but for whatever reason they can't or um you know they want to like it's professional uh setup we've got here so the battery died of course it's cold so the batteries aren't lasting no. well so ted was in the middle of a thought here he remembers what it was yeah i was just saying that uh you know part of part of it is is you know, you kind of, uh, these adventures, sharing them with other people, you sort of discover other passions mm -hmm. other than the trip itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, for sure, um, there's so much more to it than just, oh, I wanna, I love, I love fishing, I love camping. I, Well, yeah, you gotta love, yeah. you know, you can't just take an awesome picture, the best one in the world. You yeah. gotta hammer the phone, I guess, and call all these people and yeah. do all the work. And yeah. true, one yeah. of the things that, yeah. You know, and, and be in sales and one of the things is I've kind of had a leg in, leg out a little bit more, but I've always, you know, Jim has always, you know, he's been a big inspiration to go on these things with him. I've and, swindled Ted into coming into a lot of backbreaking <laughs> trips with me. And I love doing it with him and, but I always had a belief that it was definitely possible and, um, you know, I always, as much as I could have come along and. You know, he's he's been really inspirational at proving that, you know, it can work if you just bust your ass. Yeah, and it. I'm not somebody that you went know? to school for filmmaking or for journalism. Mm. Actually, I'm somebody that didn't really even go to school, to be perfectly honest with you. you know? <laughs> like, I didn't have a, a, an education background, but you know what? Not a formal one, but because I started doing these trips at a young age, you know, uh, I managed to go out there and teach myself all these different things and then... Uh, learn about everything I need to know to do these larger trips and learning about uh, the bush building on what I already knew and then uh, it kind of almost in a way and then getting sponsors and writing articles and almost in a way I gave myself uh, invested money in all this almost almost gave myself my own university course yeah, in a way yeah. I sort of look at it like that right yeah. and it probably cost me as much I'll, I'll tell <laughs> yeah, you, I'll tell you yeah. it's, it's true me like, and Ted one, uh, one trip we did would cost us seven thousand dollars each we went up to the <laughs> arctic for a five-week canoe trip and both just put it on our credit cards you know <laughs> so some of the best yeah. money I've ever spent yeah though. never regretted yeah. it and to this yeah. day I'm still so happy yeah. about it and uh you know, some of the knowledge you get through it is incredible. Like I, I like, you know, I'm pretty good at some of this logistical planning and stuff, but after doing alone, I just realized I'm like, you know who they should have hired to do this. I'm like, you, Jim, you know, I'm like, you could have pulled through some of this logistical stuff that they're trying to manage from New York city. They don't understand how to get people in here or fly this in or do all the kind of stuff that, that we've had to do. And, and Jim's really had to do to, deal with these remote places in the far north and stuff i'm like and there's you, you know, learn more you learn more than you realize you're learning it's you know, true yeah things. yeah and so uh yeah. anyway i was just saying that you know jim's uh you know proven that uh you know i've always believed it's possible and i always want to be with him and it's very nice of ted to be saying all no these it's true me. but it's true wow. and uh you know it's uh um so it's been really good to uh you know see see the development of that a lot of people told me it wasn't possible oh well that's just not practical well you know i want to be i want to write articles i want to mm -hmm. get into photography and find a way to 
go, you know, be a professional outdoorsman because let's face it, you can't transport furs by canoe anymore and make a red cent, <laughs> unfortunately, right? They're like, well, maybe they'll yeah. give you some beef jerky, but they yeah, won't yeah, give you yeah. any yeah. money. And, and yeah. so, like, so many people, oh, that's just not possible. That's, you know, oh, well, you know, good luck. I mean, hopefully, you better marry rich. You know what I mean? Like, I've heard all these things. Now, those same people are like, we knew you could do it. <laughs> Honestly, like, yeah. we knew it from the beginning. Yeah. We 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 saw that passion and we we called it. <laughs> we, and I wish, we, <laughs> wish I could do that, but I don't have your skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 nobody has that skill, by the way, until you do it. And yeah. like Jim said, the discovery process and all these other things that you learn along the way become the asset. Become, and maybe even it's transferable. Jim's not younger than me, ten years younger. Uh, I've learned, I've kind of felt, followed the same path. I wrote articles and sold photographs before I did YouTube. I didn't even know you could monetize YouTube for one thing. Um, but it's all those things that I learned about photography and about filmmaking and everything else that became sort of the business part of, of this. And make mo no mistake, you can't, like these guys said, you can't just say, well, I'd love to fish, therefore I'm going to be a professional fisherman and that's how I'm going to pay my bills. It's marketing. It's uh, it's a uh, personal. It's relationships with businesses and other and brands and other people and everything else. There's a lot to manage. It's becoming a photographer, becoming a filmmaker, where you just thought you wanted to be a canoeist or a fisherman. Uh -huh. Like it's multifaceted. Yeah. And the beauty of it is when you take that risk and learn those skills, those skills are transferable. Maybe the next career is is filmmaking or something completely different than the outdoor thing that you thought you were or any not just outdoors as people. Woodworking is another you know, probably genre that people are following me for possibly. Um, that's something you might be passionate about, but how do you package that now and to, to, uh, turn it into a business rather than just a hobby? Mm -hmm. So you have to learn all these other aspects. And, and sometimes people, you know, sometimes I'm like, especially when you're in my business and you finish a bunch of projects and then you're like, where's my next paycheck coming mm -hmm. from oh, and yeah. usually it takes me a couple months to figure that out every year and now i'm at the point where i'm like okay i will be good for the year but you are kind of panicking but then you got to deliver on those things and it can be stressful you know like after this after i get out of the bush here i'm flying to texas to shoot uh, uh three different videos in some uh the hill country and on some remote ranch where there's rattlesnakes i'm not scared of rattlesnakes but i don't really know anything about rattlesnakes <laughs> and then i'm flying back to do go to a trade show and all these kinds of things and but then you know it, you kind of you sit back and you're like what am i complaining about like i'm doing what i love to do and yeah. you know at the end of the day i'd sure as heck rather be sitting out here hanging out with you ice yeah. fishing than sitting yeah. in an office yeah. you know what i mean that's that passion yeah. thing that jim mentioned earlier if you don't have it you can't get through those periods and you start thinking of it as a job and i've heard a lot of people that haven't made a, a career of what they thought they wanted to make a career of their passion they kind of go down that path and then they get they go off of it because they say it's not worth it it's become a job yeah. well if it's truly your passion like that's your number one passion then you're likely able to get beyond that and make it into a career that you're yeah. still happy with well what i do is now i do all these jobs for work and then I just go on a trip and go on it for vacation anyway. So if you <laughs> yeah. like, if you don't want to go and go camping and, and go fishing for your, your job, because that's your uh, hobby, well, you know, you can do that for your job and then you can do it for your hobby too and mm -hmm. not have to yeah, take true. a vacation and not have yeah. to take any pictures if you don't want. But now I find when I'm out there, I like taking the pictures. And, you know, sometimes once in a while, I will admit though, when I see a moose and sometimes I say, okay, am I going to scramble for my camera, which is over there? Or am I just going to sit here and enjoy the moose instead of worrying about capturing content all the time? Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes I just do that at, yeah, even, yeah. just because I'd rather, instead of running over here and grabbing my camera and oh, oh crap, I, oh, I blew it. No, <laughs> let's just enjoy the moment. Right. So I guess my point is sometimes you don't want it to, it, it to overcome the reason that you're out here but I, I don't really see that as an issue with what i'm doing you know what i mean i think, I think part it, of that is yeah. um, what, go back to ted in a second i'm not a typical interviewer by the way as yeah. you know i'm, I'm yeah. not it's not all about the people that i'm interviewing it's just me sitting around and talking with a couple of guys yeah. in my opinion but um that um now that i said that i've lost my train of thought yeah. so go ahead ted. um well i started uh, i was just gonna say i think that 
part of it too is, is you know jim and i we were you know doing videos and other things for together and putting sizzles together trying to get a tv series and you know of our adventures and and a lot of the time it was like well we're, we're just going to go out there and we'll do this and we didn't necessarily know but we had a belief it would lead somewhere we could see something building we could see it was positive and sometimes a different door will open that you don't necessarily know or weren't planning for. I mean, me and Jim went on a loan and we, we won a loan, but we're not, we weren't pitting ourselves as survival experts. It turns out that we're survival experts. It turns out <laughs> yeah. we were, but we weren't, that wasn't like our thing. I mean, we had this skill, yeah. but that wasn't what we were, yeah. you know, pitching. But at the same time, I mean, it led to other other type of series and stuff. Because we that, usually go out there and we bring gear, we, we you know we bring fishing rods and we go to places where we know the fishing is good like we're not out we there we got to study the skill in case scenario. everything goes wrong yeah. and we have to do bushcraft stuff but yeah. the point is is if we weren't doing all that other stuff as yeah, well right. yeah. i mean that door wouldn't have opened for us yeah and so things open you might decide yes or no but it wasn't necessarily the end game and but because we were building that it it, it just kind of happened and it's going to still happen and by the way winning the show alone we won five hundred thousand dollars us which was you know pretty decent too so we we wanted to try a little extra hard yeah, yeah. so that was good but anyway i just wanted to throw that in there <laughs> that I mean, was good so so that's pretty great so <laughs> his point is sometimes <laughs> things but the point is sometimes things switch up well no, you know I, there's an incentive we say let's go for it you know well I mean? we were just kind of yeah. like and we know you know it's not an easy decision to do something like that because if you know you're kind of like you're this like, all right, gonna we're gonna, hard. we're not yeah, just going yeah. out there and coming home in a week. It's just, like this yeah. is gonna be hard. You're right? sacrificing your family life, uh, yeah. other opportunities, yeah, uh, career sure. opportunities, or whatever. Like, it is that's don't like, yeah, you can't take take that lightly. That they went on there and won that show. It was more than just survival. It's a lot of mental stuff going on too, and filming it all ourselves too. There's yeah. no camera crew that was gonna give us a bite of their sandwich. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Off camera, mm -hmm. like you you're out there and putting it out like ted said you have to be in the game in order to get opportunities and i i think that is one of the main success principles in my life and i think in most successful people's life say yes to stuff that doesn't maybe look like it is exactly on that path that you're going down but you'll find these opportunities pop up if they weren't willing if they hadn't done all these wilderness trips that were so incredible First of all, the producers of that show wouldn't have been interested in them, likely, and they wouldn't have had the skill to win it. Never mind, you know, and, surviving. And a few also days the skill it, to yeah. shoot it. That's something yeah, that right, they look yeah. at, right? True, that we, yeah. Oh, they're good with the camera. Look at they filmed all this stuff. Right. That that was kind of a big drawing factor for mm -hmm. sure, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So completely different skills than they ever, than I'm sure either one of them 20 years ago ever thought they were going to acquire. Never yeah. mind utilize and make money from. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a, it's a great life lesson. Put yourself out there. Say yes to every opportunity until the right one comes along and you've gained that experience in the meantime. Sitting back in your office or your home saying, I want to do this as a career, but not be willing to take those crappy first steps, which they often are, or the hard things or putting it out there, be out of your comfort zone, whatever it is. If you don't do those things, you're not gaining that experience you need in order to transfer that into something bigger and a bigger part of your life. And what Jim was touching on earlier was pretty good. Like when he said the prospecting job, I, I think what you're getting at a bit there is that the prospecting job, A, it was outdoor. You got to do some of that stuff you enjoyed, but it kind of gave you, all right, you're going to go, you know, work hard for a month. And then it gave you a bit of time. And I get paid a lot. I can't spend it because I'm in the middle of the bush. And then mm -hmm. I come back, I can do a trip. I can invest it in. And then you go back business. and get some yeah. more money. And so, yeah. you know if it, in that and it was outdoor oriented but like you know not most of the time not in a very fun way you know it's like <laughs> you're like connecting lines of like from a, a drill uh, to get like water up to a drill and it's minus 30 and it's five in the morning and still dark and like water spraying all on you and it, you know what i mean like pitch black water it, dumping it, on you yeah, minus 35 it's just like you're just like <laughs> thinking like I yeah it's hard a lot of places I'd rather but you be. supplemented <laughs> it you know what you wanted with some of yeah. that right so it kind of it, kind of gave you well a, that also definitely like i learned all kinds of gps mapping and i learned all kind i learned I, I was like a project manager and all that so i 
I learned all kinds of other outdoors. Like I'm sure it made me tougher, you know, oh, yeah. as far as just to handle the freezing cold it's, and misery. You it's know a, I mean? it's a good. I, I guess the point I was sort of making is like I do a bit. Like I will work construction and I'll make money and then, but then I can be able to like be like, all right, you know, see you later. We're we're going on a loan. We're going to film the tomogamy adventure that we just did recently. Yeah. We're you know, cause, and I kind of have that rapport where it's like, you know, I'm here and uh, you have me a hundred percent. Like I'm not gonna, but I'm, you know, I'm also gonna maybe so just- So what you're saying is, is finding a this. way to structure your life yeah. where you have that flexibility yeah, to, to maybe transition into- To transition, yeah. Something. Cause yeah. like, I'd like I to I think that's kind of how it worked out for me. You I know? guess, yeah. I think that yeah. that's, yeah. you have to do that. And I talk about debt a lot and if you get yourself in too much debt that you can't take that time off, then your dreams are never going to be fulfilled because you're going to be too busy working to pay off that debt. If you don't structure your life in a way that you're in the right location or with the right people, in their case, they're lucky they're brothers and they both have the same passion. Uh, I know for me, uh, sacrificing uh, location, I moved north out of the city, even though at the time I, when I was younger, I was working mostly in the city. It's where I earned my income. I had to sacrifice my commuting time every day by moving north closer to the places that I could play and do more of this outdoor stuff that, um, you know, it was a sacrifice for everybody, mostly my, my family, I mean, but mostly myself who had to commute and go work in a place that I hated, but live in a place that gave me opportunity to go out and do the things I really love to do, not knowing that eventually it would turn into a full-time occupation for me or yeah. full-time life for me. Yeah. It's also healthy living out here. I mean, you get more exercise, and I, I just read a study recently I've about a how, lot like, of exercise if, over the last two if days you just sure. have uh, <laughs> yeah. like two trees on your property, you'll live longer or something like that. Yeah. Right? So yeah, just yeah. oh, I know. swear, just sitting here, just getting this exercise, breathing the air. Just when Sean was explaining where we were, I just took a second. And I'm like, oh my god, like I swear that added five years to my life just right there, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Got two dogs, the adventure dogs sitting up here. Oh, Buck yeah. and Callie are just wandering around the campfire waiting for us to be done <laughs> so they can get some food off of us. Yeah, exactly. Or some attention, but yeah. what, what a life for them, what a life yeah. for us. I, I just can't recommend following your dreams, your passions enough to yeah. make those early sacrifices till you get to that point in your life where you're doing this. And this might Callie be is bringing her bed over here. <laughs> that is very wise. <laughs> She wants to hang out with us, but she doesn't want to lie in the snow. Good Ted girl. was like, oh, let me put my jacket down for her. So she's just brought her own bed to lie on. <laughs> Bring it to that, the front. That, is, that so is smart. Very, I've never seen that Come dog here, do Kelly. that before. Yeah. I think she's worried we're going to take it from her. Really, we're it's proud okay, of her. It's okay, Kelly. It's okay. Kelly, bring it over here, pup. <laughs> there she goes. She's, oh. <laughs> she tripped on it and fell. She's trying to give it to Buck. She wants oh, to play with old, Buck. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad I couldn't have brought my dog. They would have had a yeah, blast. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe she doesn't want to lie on it. She just wants to beat it. Yeah, no, I don't, who knows? I think she did. Kelly, yeah. Kelly, Kelly, can you bring that here, Pop? Come on. I think Good though girl. that one of the main things why people don't do it is just the fear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just Come the on. fear of doing it, and then, but you know, it's kind of like it's it's much more stable and secure just to stay where you are, even though you hate it. It's, it's hard to change. It's hard to freaking yeah. change your, yeah, yeah. your, uh, your behaviors, isn't it? You it's know, for a years. lot of people it is too. And I feel like a lot of people would be like, well, I'd just rather stay here. Cause you know, it's more, it's more stable or it's more this or more that. And when you go in to do what you want, there's so many unknowns, there's stress and, Nowadays, people almost like feel bad if they're getting stressed out or if they're worried. It's like, I yeah. feel like you, that's kind of a natural part of it, you know? Hey buddy, did you walk in slush? Let me see, give me a pop, give me a pop. Come here, pop. Come here, sit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I, and it is very scary, but oh, yeah. if you're, if you start doing it and you start, especially like in the situation I was, where I was just like, in, in debt, like not a ton of debt, right? Yeah. But I was in yeah. debt and I, I decided to go into it, which is not the best time because I kept telling myself, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then I'm just like, when I make more money, when I make more yeah, money. And eventually yeah. I'm like, listen, it's now or never. Mm -hmm. I gotta just do it. And and I, I, I managed to pull it off. And I think that if you're feeling like, really scared or if you're feeling like maybe stressed out or anxiety about how things are gonna work out, 
honestly, it means you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that means that something's wrong or that they're not, not working. But if you don't, you can't go into this, expect to have no fear. And it, it's, it's honestly a sign that you're doing something right. And that's going to motivate you to, to work harder or whatever. And it's going to be so freaking rewarding when it works out. You know what I mean? The other thing that does is makes you be cautious and do some more research, I, I, but yeah. not to the point where you don't do it. So I, I talked about uh, paralysis anal of analysis on my channel a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people analyze and think, well, I just get this in place or that in place. If I just learn this or learn that, or I go to school for another three or four years to learn yeah. that skill, I need to become a filmmaker before I can do a YouTube channel based around my passion or whatever it is. And paralysis of, anal of analysis can turn into years and then maybe a lifetime of never following your passion or following your dreams because you just didn't it was never the right time i've heard it from people saying it's not the right time to get married it's not the right time to have kids and not the right time to start my own business change my career it's never a good time i can tell you that much there's never the right time to do it yeah. you just have to jump in there and take that gamble it's, a, yeah. it's so true Jeez, isn't it man. it's just like you're never going to be like the best in the world at something yeah. before you you know and and that's the fear thing right it's like i gotta be a little better i have to learn more i have to but part of it is like doing it then you'll learn it as you're doing it you know but it, it's you know a lot of the anxiety and fear is is Kelly. stems from excitement from something you really want to do yeah right well and how do mother birds teach their didn't you tell me like sometimes you gotta jump and learn how to fly on the way right like don't mother birds kick their birds out of the nest and they learn how to fly uh, on the way uh, kelly fetch it up kelly. fetch <laughs> yeah yeah you know so the I, dogs are having a bit of a spaz out over yeah. there it's There's true i think we're all guilty yeah. of that you know i mean it's it, we're you know it, and i i feel like that a lot of the time too and yeah well you know. yeah you're so you're you're working as a carpenter yeah so i do i do construction and i i want to move uh you know me and my wife have been talking about moving up north and uh you know it's a prime example of that is uh we you know we're like oh we we're looking at some places and we bought a house in Toronto and we're like, oh, maybe we'll like, you know, wait for the right place. And we weren't totally comfortable with it. Uh, and in the meantime, if we just pulled the trigger, you know, the Toronto real estate market has now started going down. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, and if we had just done Basically what we wanted what instead of over analyzing, yeah, oh, we got to yeah. fix this first. You're saying we, that he's speaking from experience with what your paralysis is now. <laughs> exactly. So we didn't other. just pull the trigger. Yeah. And in the meantime, we lost some but equity. He right? was just so, complaining about this in the car on the way up. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and that's happened to everybody, yeah. myself included, many yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's it's... But, anyway, I but mean, sometimes the fear is um, justified. There's a right. lot of like if you think you're just going to go out and start a career doing your whatever your hobby is, everybody almost in the world wants to make a career of yeah. their hobby, right? So yeah. you need to think seriously about it. First of all, make sure you are 100% passionate enough that you're going to go through all those lean periods, all those struggles. You're going to be able to look at the diversity needed to become successful or whatever that is make sure you're a people person so you can talk to people i went meant to mention this earlier as each of them were speaking that that um uh desire to share with other people means you must you have to like people yeah. you actually have you want to share this with people yeah. it's not just it's not a selfish thing when you we go out here and see something beautiful and we want to film it to just to make more money it's not that at all it's actually we wish you could see this because i think the world would be a better place if everybody got to see what we get to see like we're watching the sun's just got pretty much gone down here we've got a warm fire over here like it's, it's, i can't think of a better place to be other than with our families right now or having them with us but mm -hmm. yeah. man it's um uh, it's um uh, desirable but you have to be willing and wanting to share that with people and le legitimately legitimately feel like uh, helping people and to show them the best of the world uh, I don't know what else to say about that I think that that's uh, missing I think that's probably not understood by a lot of people that watch people on social media and, and YouTube in particular in this case that it's a passion not um, just our own passion it's a passion to want to share that with you guys yeah mm -hmm. definitely it's true i mean a lot of what uh 
you know, I, I, I'm sure for both of us is that we have a passion for wild spaces and, you know, even though we go out and we use resources from nature, we, we also have a vested interest in it staying wild, you know? Yeah, well, and I mean, humans and, have had a place in most natural ecosystems for a very long time, our ancestors and, you know, all over the place, right? So, so that's you know, passionate for us and yeah. like showing it to the world. Yeah. you know is is a point where it's like well maybe more people will get out and do it and they'll fall in love with it and you know maybe you know this this will still be around and uh uh you know for you know the next generation that kind of stuff yeah. i mean that's important to us too and and mm -hmm. so you can feel good about that i think for, yeah. for what we're doing anyway yeah yeah like the tomogamy thing we did where we were talking about mm -hmm. the old growth forest and I think that definitely has a part to do with it with me is, is kind of showing some people explaining like what you're explaining, how we're, we're far from a road and we're, there's these places that we're in kind of exist mm -hmm. in this part of the world. And for me, I kind of hope too, that they will continue to exist yeah, in yeah. another 50, in another yeah. hundred years. And if nobody really understands that, then nobody might say like, Hey, why don't we leave this place wild and develop over here? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, I want to share that feeling yeah. with people. It's hard to share the feeling of what we're doing right now. It's like so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you know, you get a picture. You can't, like, I can't explain to people right now how the fire smells and how the crisp air smells and just the emotion of having this place to ourselves and all that kind of stuff. But we can do our best. And it's, it's, um, I mean, that's part of the passion, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I, a lot of the time I think, you know, if everyone could just see this or feel this, you know, they'd, they'd you know, often feel the same way or want to be here or try it, right? And, uh, you know. Well, there's some discomfort right now. Like, it's, I'm starting to shiver, so sitting yeah. on a frozen log, yeah. you know, the sun's down, it's starting to drop in temperature. This hardship makes you appreciate the, the easy part of life. Like, yeah, to me, for sure. I don't know, there's a lot of, a lot of I think it's important to have some discomfort in your life in order to appreciate the comfort. Yeah, yeah. that's one thing that's that we, we, we noticed from alone. That was a good lesson from alone. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're sitting out there like we're missing Christmas and, we're, mm. and, you know, we're miserable. And we're like, well, you know, half the world, like, or not half the world, but a lot of people in the world are starving. And mm -hmm. sure, we're surviving, we're starving, but we're doing it for a show, you know? Oh, like, yeah. what should we really be sad about? And mm -hmm. it, it kind of makes, it definitely made other parts of our life that maybe seemed hard before not seem as hard anymore. Yeah, gratitude. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It was definitely humbling too, because like, mm -hmm. you know, we always say like, you know, there's starving people places. Well, I had never into that point actually mm -hmm. experienced like Actual real starving and you're like, hunger. <laughs> this you know? sucks. And it's not it's something true, you, know, yeah. you yeah. Kind of wish on anybody, but yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, uh, it, and like going back to what you were saying before, Sean, it was <laughs> not like it was terrifying, yeah. you know, like, you know, we said yes to it, right? We said, yes, we're going to go on there. Mm -hmm. There was incentives, of course, but you know, like, did we want it? Like I was terrified. I, I, almost say, I said no at first. And I think yeah. a lot of people like, I, this is what, just what I think I might be wrong, but I think a lot of people that just say, Oh yeah, so so easily, and they don't really think, and they're not nervous. They might not really know how challenging it's going to be. Yeah. Because on that show, they're not throwing you out in a situation where you can thrive at all. This is right, the polar yeah. opposite, right? Yeah. But that same year, I walked solo across the Ungava Peninsula, which is a <laughs> huge <laughs> stretch of the Arctic, this in 36 good. days. I did a fly-in whitewater canoe expedition and starting at the Northwest Territories border in northern Saskatchewan and that was about three weeks. Before and, on, yeah, right? yeah, with travel time and, and everything. I did uh, uh, three interior uh, trips in northern Ontario and Killarney Park uh, and, and um, then I went on a loan. So in that <laughs> year I spent five months <laughs> um, camping and traveling through uh, wild places in one year wow. and camping in tundra tents and in shelters mm -hmm. and stuff like that which is my record for sure uh, <laughs> but uh, that was good um, good experience so I, you know I come back from Ungawa solo walking across the Arctic in the winter and they're like you want to go on alone I'm like no <laughs> you know <laughs> You know, and they're like, well, call us back if you change your mind. So like a couple months went by. I'm like, okay, I'll go. Oh God. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, you know what Ted he, said? He's like, oh man, you know, I really want to go on alone and you're always taking me on all these stupid trips I don't want to do and I want to do this, so you should come with me. And I'm like, you're right, man, I'm in. He's like, if yeah. you really want to go, I'll go, you yeah. know? And because yeah. uh, I was like, it was kind of, because we said no and I'm like, I think we should call them back and say yeah. say that we're going to go. And, and But of course, you know, Jim was the first one to reach out to them, right? So yeah. let's not forget I that. I did reach out to them, and you know what? This shot's pretty dark, but maybe yeah, it'd be a good Yeah, podcast. it probably is, but who cares? But so, so uh, you know what I did when I, like, there's like 10,000 applicants, and this is this is actually how I got my whole stake when I when I started. I make videos for Field and Stream. I'm, mm -hmm. I just did a 22 series part project for them and doing another project for them, and they get a lot of views on their, on their Facebook and their website and stuff like that. And I actually was in New York City and cold call called the editor-in-chief at his office building and managed to get past security and the other security and his his assistant and I was sitting in the office with the uh, vice president of Two Park Avenue Field and Stream and he's like all right you're exactly what we're looking for Baird and he hired me you know what I mean to do a bunch of stuff same thing with a loan is that I took the initiative like I found out who the casting director was and I hmm. and I researched that and I called her up. Maybe you were uh, well, pushing the envelope a bit here. Yeah, I think we'll wrap <laughs> this up. I think Kelly's just going, she's barking because she's getting restless, yeah. she's bored. She's tired most of more than anything. Any fish. Yeah, haven't she's caught bored? any fish yet. What, she doesn't like ice fishing? She's bored, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, it's great. It's great to sit down. Finally, yeah. first of all, it's great to get out and you know, first trip with these guys and I'm sure there'll be others in the future. Um, I'm g glad you guys got to, to listen to this talk. We might have to talk a little bit more tomorrow, who knows, when it gets light out. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is getting cold, and I've got a big roast that I need to cook on the oh, fire yeah. outside. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Get up there, fire up some food. I don't have a, I don't have a YouTube channel uh, at the moment, but I'm, I'm doing stuff with Jim. And, yeah, my you know, I'm YouTube channel. I'm just on like, face, Facebook and Instagram, just under Ted Baird. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and Jim Baird. My is just Jim Baird Adventurer. And I'm going to be posting a video of me and Ted's trek in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So check yeah. that out for sure. Check out my video of this trip on my self-reliance. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you'll see us go and finish off our meals here. The hot tent, haven't shown you that yet. You can see uh, what that's like inside. Tomorrow's it's cleared out somewhat right now. It's supposed to be a beautiful morning. So hope to catch a nice sunrise, maybe catch a fish in the morning, who knows. And then trek out of here. And like to show you more of this area. I might even end up staying another night because I it's I, I just forgot how beautiful it was out here, how quiet it is, and uh, with good weather, man, it, winter's winding down. It's been a long one. I'm kind of looking forward to being at, it being over. But on the other hand, this is kind of the one of the, some of the best days of the winter. March, the sun is actually mm -hmm. hot. You can practically get on the north shore here facing south and take your shirt off yeah. and get a tan it's that yeah. nice yeah you can mm -hmm. we were over i don't know if you saw those icicles uh on your way in but like the yeah, sun was thing. beating and there was all the steam coming oh, off yeah. the rocks yeah and even though it was like minus 15 at the time mm -hmm. but well, the, the maybe sun, minus 10 but yeah, maybe the but sun the sun was, was hot, hot. Yeah. yeah great spot like i said you got you got to get out and enjoy this stuff and find these places i'm not telling you where this is because it's a little private gem and we've got a whole bunch of places like this and these guys do too it's not about giving you specifics but got it's not hard to find places like this in canada if you're from here get out and and, and find these places or we've got lots of public land that's what this is it's a, here for us to enjoy and if you're from another country get a hold of uh, maybe even one of us or somebody else to to hook you up with a guide or guide ourselves or hook, tell you what outfitters to go through or stores to go to to, to get more, more information. But it is here. This place is here for us to enjoy. Come here, respect the laws and respect the environment and, and nature and uh, just enjoy it like we are. So yeah. thanks a lot guys. I'm glad to finally get out and huh? get out, outside with you. And like I said, looking forward to future trips. Or, Looking yeah. forward to uh, you guys warming up that tent with a fire. <laughs> so, so I have a good night's sleep. Me too. Me too, yeah. Sean. Yeah. Good talking about all this stuff. Yeah, great. Oh, this yeah. is great. All right, thanks everybody. I'll see you up at the cabin next time. Take care.